Hello everyone, welcome to Lost in the Episode. Today I'm going to be going over the new Netflix original series, Sky Rojo, which is all about three hookers on the run. And all I can say is, this is one of the most belligerent shows I have ever seen. So, let's talk about it. All eight episodes of Sky Rojo Season 1 are streaming now on Netflix. Sky Rojo is created by Alex Peña and stars Veronica Sanchez, Miguel Angel Sylvester, Lali Esposito, Yanni Prado, and Enrique Aquer. From the creators of Money Heist comes Sky Rojo. Coral, Wendy, and Gina go on the run in search of freedom while being chased by Romeo, their pimp from Las Novias Club, and his henchmen Moises and Christian. Welcome to the world of Sky Rojo, a flashy, garish, and gratuitous new series that really wears its heart on its sleeve and never tries to be anything other than what it is. A forewarning before you dive headfirst into this gonzo show, please leave all logic at the door. There are things that happen in Sky Rojo that would never happen in real life and don't make a lick of sense, so if you can't handle that, this show is not for you. To really prepare you for what you're actually in store for here, I would say that Sky Rojo is a blend of Sucker Punch and Spring Breakers meets Smoke and Aces and Shoot 'em Up. So if that means anything to you, then you'll know if this is your cup of tea or not. The show starts out in pretty much the thick of the action, and then we start getting glimpses into all of our characters' past lives, what they were doing before they worked at the club, while they worked there, and everything leading up to that insane predicament that happens in the first episode. One thing that I was not expecting at all from this series was any kind of depth or real character development, and shockingly, Sky Rojo delivers on those things in spades. We even get detailed backstories of our two hitmen and our pimp villain. We'll call him the pimp villain, uh, which allows us to become engaged in the chase because we are invested in these characters. Even though our baddies are fleshed out, this show 100% belongs to our three scrappy leading ladies. They are not only badass, but they also have hearts of gold and just all of the gravitas you could ever want. And I also really enjoyed their dark and self-deprecating humor. I was really taken aback by how funny this show was. But what this show really needed was a little bit more intrigue, or even like an overarching mystery, to really propel its story out of its familial roots. Because at the end of the day, this plot is as simple as they come. It's three people on the run from some hitmen. We've seen it done before. Many times. So we really needed a hook here. And also, I can't help but feel like they could have pushed it even further here. I mean, they've already gone off the deep end. This is the definition of an exercise in excess. So why not just go balls to the wall? More violence, more drugs, more sex, more nudity, more kinetic action, more stylistic flourishes. If you're gonna go there, you better go there. So of course, no spoilers here, but the end does leave off on a cliffhanger. And we do know that Netflix has renewed this show for a second season. So, this is what I want to see from this show moving forward. I want way more world building, I want a deeper and more involving storyline, and overall, I want even more belligerence. We already have our characters down pat. So now it's time to really build up everything around them and to define this show's voice. In Lost in the Episode, we have four tiers that we rank our shows on. We have our first tier, which is must watch no matter what. We have our second tier, which is watch if you really enjoy the genre that it exists in. Number three is watch if you have nothing else to watch. And number four is just skip it all together. I really had a great time with Sky Rojo. It is an outrageous, bonkers, and gratuitous adventure that is really driven by its character development. But it really needs to find its footing and its voice in the next season to keep its viewers invested. So, I'm gonna say, watch if you like insane action. 
I don't really know what genre to pinpoint this show on, but I do hope that this review helped you know if you're going to like it or not. Because it's definitely not for everyone, but I really liked it. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Episode. We will see you soon.